Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this super cute circus themed tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more tutorials, vlogs, products, all kinds of stuff I have coming your way. So let's wake up, prep those tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. Today I am working on a 20 ounce skinny that I purchased through the stainlessdepot.com. I've already prepped and primed my tumbler here with a basic white, and now we are ready to tape off our areas. I'm just gonna be using a basic three inch tape and a two inch tape to achieve my stripes. To make sure that my stripe along the bottom is as straight as possible, I'm just gonna use it as a guide and mark with a pencil so that way I can follow that completely around, making sure, again, that my stripe is as straight as possible. And if your stripe isn't as straight as possible, it's not a big deal, okay guys? <laughs> it's gonna get covered up with pinstriping. Just, just do your best, that's all you gotta do. Now my skinny tumbler happens to have a little bit of a taper at the bottom, so I'm just gonna make sure that I just go along the, the pencil line with my tape really good and then just kinda squish everything together at the bottom. Now I'm just gonna take my two inch tape and I'm just gonna completely go around my tumbler with this tape, making sure that each time I lay a piece of tape down, I kind of put it right up against the other tape. And again, because there's a taper, we're gonna have to adjust it a little bit at the end. We just want it as straight as we possibly can and then we can kind of zhuzh it around at the end after all the tape is applied. I'm gonna go ahead and add my last piece of tape here and then I'll kind of show you what I mean once I lift it up. Of course, if you're using a tumbler that it's completely straight top to bottom, you won't really have to zhuzh yours around, but you know, us folks with the, the tapered ones, we gotta kind of do this. So I'm just gonna come back through and just make sure those pieces of tape are as straight up and down as possible. And again, there's nothing that pinstriping won't hide if you know your lines are off just a little bit. It is not a big deal. I'm essentially just making sure that the little gaps that are poking through are about equally the same completely around. Now that my lines are as straight as I could get them, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and remove every other piece of tape. Now, if I was doing up a bunch of these tumblers at once or you know, a, a few more than just one, I would definitely hold on to those other pieces of tape that I just took off and reuse it for another tumbler to do the same design. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside and I'm gonna spray paint it this prickly pear by Rust-Oleum. It kind of goes with the glitters that I'm gonna be using today, so that's why I chose that. So my stripes are all dry. It really depends on your environment, how long they take. It took probably about 30 minutes for mine to dry. I went ahead and removed those other pieces of red tape. And again, you can save those for another tumbler if you're doing a bunch of them at once. Now I'm gonna reuse that tape along the bottom to kind of mask off around where my stripes begin there. And as you can see, because that paint is so fresh, I just wanted to make sure that it's not gonna really peel up my paint. So I went ahead and stuck it on my towel or I stick it on my shirt and just to make sure it's not as sticky so it doesn't peel up all kinds of paint off of my, tum my freshly painted tumbler. As you can see, some of that white did come up, but that doesn't bother me because we're gonna be spray painting it this seaside blue. Now that we have our color template all laid down on our tumbler, these are the color glitters that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using Sangria for the red. I'm also gonna be using this Fuzzy Navel, which is a beautiful white chunky mix with a little bit of pink to kind of go with the Sangria. And I'm also gonna be using Oceanside, but of course you guys can use any type of glitters you already have on hand. Now I'm just gonna use Mod Podge to apply my glitters, but you guys can obviously do it in any fashion. You would like if you like to apply your stripes and all that with the epoxy method please feel free to do that but i'm just going to go ahead and use mod podge and as you guys can see i'm i'm applying my mod podge almost like how i would paint some fingernails i just start at the top i make like a little ball of glue and i just press everything down completely all the way to the bottom making sure that everything's nice and coated and there's no peaks and valleys in my glue and of course with Mod Podge, every stripe that I do, I'm gonna make sure that I apply my glitter right away because Mod Podge has a tendency to dry very quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glitter. Then I'm gonna do this process completely around my tumbler where I do every single stripe in the sangria. 
Now the reason why I chose to do the sangria first is because that's my darkest color and it just makes it easier when you go to apply the lighter colors as you go because next I'll be doing Oceanside after I'm all done here and then I'll be applying the fuzzy navel last and it just makes sure that none of those little red glitters get stuck down into my other colors. Now, as you guys see here, I'm very carefully taking my chip brush and sweeping away right next to my color. You just want to be careful because that Mod Podge is still wet and you don't want to disturb the glitter. You just want to remove the little extra pieces so that way we can keep moving and keep applying those glitters. And just like the stripes we did, I'm just going to apply my Mod Podge, making sure there's no peaks and valleys in that glue. Then as soon as I am done applying my Mod Podge, I'm going to go ahead and apply my glitter. Then I'm going to kind of sweep off any little extra blue pieces that might be on there. I'm going to take a smaller brush this time and kind of get up next to, see right there, I'm just going to take a very small brush and just kind of sweep those away. And then we'll be able to move on to the white. Once I have my little blue pieces all swept away, I'm gonna do the same exact thing like we did with the sangria. I'm gonna start at the top and just very carefully kind of push my glue and then just drag it all the way down to the bottom, making a nice line. And then we'll apply that chunky glitter to this. Now I'm just gonna keep going completely around my tumbler, filling in my white chunky stripes. I'm gonna let that dry for a couple hours because with Mod Podge, you wanna make sure that it's completely dry before you add your epoxy because if you don't, you run the chance of it not being completely dry and it will turn your epoxy kind of a milky color and we definitely don't want that. So make sure that these tumblers are very dry before you add your epoxy. Now, I know stripes can sometimes be a little scary, but I know that you guys got this. Now, once my tumbler was nice and dry, and to ensure that our stripes stay as pure as possible, I went out and I gave it a nice coating of my two times ultra clear gloss here just to make sure again that those glitter glitters will not shift around and I just kind of take my glove just to verify nothing is going to shift once we apply our epoxy. And the epoxy that I'm using today is Illumilite's amazing quick coat epoxy. It dries a lot quicker than normal epoxy so that way we can get those projects done a little bit faster. And of course, every layer of epoxy that I apply, make sure that I hit it up really good with my torch. I just do a couple swipes. You just want to move very quickly. You don't want to stay in one place with it. I just let it rotate about once or twice and then that's it. Just to get rid of any of those little micro bubbles that might be under there. Now this was about six or seven hours after I applied my epoxy. Again, it depends on your environment on how quickly your epoxy cures and it is no longer sticky. Now I wanted to give my tumbler kind of an antique look. So I found this Argyle print that I had printed out on some clear water slide paper. And for those of you that don't know how to use clear water slide paper or never have, I'll go ahead and attach a link right above so that you guys can simply tap on it and I'll show you exactly how to use water slide paper. But I have my little squeegee, I have a nice bowl of water so that way I can get my paper going here. So I'm just going to go ahead and dunk that in and then we'll be ready to slide it onto the tumbler. Now let's say you're working with a tumbler that's a little bit bigger than this because I was able to do this full water slide paper completely onto my tumbler here. But let's say you're working with something that's a little bit bigger. You could absolutely just go ahead and make pre-cuts where you just cut the width of the stripes that you want to do. You don't have to do a full wrap. If you just want to make sure that you get in with the white there, you can just make those stripes, cut it, and apply it that way. There is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. Whatever way you guys feel more comfortable doing it or whatever way works for your project, do it that way. Now that my water slide is able to be moved and easily come off of the backing, I'm just going to simply wrap it around my tumbler. There will be some overhanging sections because again, this tumbler isn't straight. So we will just have to make sure that we come through and trim everything up. You just want to make sure you go around completely the best that you can and then we can always come back through and trim off any excess. Now, once I have this paper, completely off. I'm just going to go ahead and slide it off right here. I'm just going to come through and kind of push everything around and make sure there's no wrinkles in my water slide paper. I'm just going to take my hands and very carefully kind of push everything out. Then once I have that all adjusted, I'm just going to simply take a very sharp knife and I'm going to go ahead and trim up any little areas that need to be trimmed right there along the seam need to be trimmed. So I'm going to go ahead and peel that extra backing off there. Then I'm going to come through and do the same thing around my blue area on the bottom here. I'm just going to take my nice straight 
our nice sharp knife and go completely around the seam and do the same exact thing. And before I trim up the top, I'm gonna go ahead and take my little squeegee that I had on hand there, and I'm going to go ahead and start removing all that extra water out from behind my water slide paper before I trim the top. Now, as you guys could see, I kind of dunked my squeegee in the water. It just really helps glide over that water slide paper a little bit better because we definitely don't want to rip it or tear it at this point. We just want to work very gently, pushing all that water out from underneath. And once all that water is removed from underneath, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the top here. And again, I'm just going to take my very sharp knife, working very carefully, making sure not to rip my water slide paper. It can very easily rip at this point. So just make sure your knife is extremely sharp and can glide right through that paper so that way it doesn't make any little rip marks. But if that happens, guys, it's not a big deal. Just take a little piece of the paper and kind of put it back over it once the epoxy is applied. You won't even be able to tell that you kind of patched it up with a little piece that you might have taken off. Not a big deal. Now I'm just going to take my towel and just kind of really make sure that all that water is out from underneath. And then I'm going to set that off to the side and let that dry. Now I worked on this tumbler in the morning and I kind of let my paper dry throughout the day. And I felt comfortable adding my pinstriping now right over top of the water slide paper. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, go ahead and give it another thin coat of epoxy before you start applying your decals. But I felt comfortable enough to do it this way. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now the vinyls that I'm using are a textured metallic vinyl and that's just a Cricut brand that I purchased at Michael's. Now when I started up the design for this tumbler, I did like a search for old antique circus theme type stuff and I was really taken back by how the ladies who would do the trapeze, uh, the trapeze artists, ladies, they, how their uniforms looked and I, I thought they were just beautiful. So this was actually inspired by a, a performer's outfit that I had seen from way back in the day. <laughs> now you can make your pinstriping any size you'd like. I just really wanted it to pop and I just really wanted it to resemble this costume that I had seen. So that's why I made mine just a little bit thicker today. Now once my pinstriping is all applied, I'm going to go ahead and trim up the bottom. If you guys remember, there's no water slide paper there in the blue area, so I was able to kind of peel that back. Again, like I said, if you feel like you're going to have to need to peel back your vinyl, go ahead and put a coat of epoxy before this step. <laughs> Now for the most part, most of the costumes that I've seen kind of had fringe, but some of them also had a very beautifully swagged fabric across the front, and I really liked that, so I kind of went with that look. This was just a basic scallop that was available in my Cricut design space. That's, that's all it is, just a very simple scallop. Now, because I bought the variety pack of this particular vinyl, I went ahead and used the pale gold for the pinstriping and for the scallop along the bottom. And once I had my scalp fully applied around the bottom there, I'm going to show you guys how I kind of tidied up the edge here. I just came back through and I just went right along with my sharp X-Acto knife, right along the edge of the other scallop to kind of join them all together. And that's how I cleaned up my edge. Now I knew I also wanted to add a little bit of stars, so I just cut out a bunch of these stars in varying sizes. Again, the star shape is available through Cricut Design. Very simple star shape. I just made very tiny stars, kind of bigger stars, just in varying sizes, and just placed them sporadically throughout my design here. I took them and put them in between each scallop and then up in between inside of each scallop as well. And for the stars, I'm using that silver that is available in that pack as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some more stars. I knew I wanted to add them kind of up in the corners of my stripes here. So I'm going to take my bigger stars accompanied by the littler stars kind of around it. And I'm just going to put those up in each corner kind of diagonally from one another at the top and at the bottom. Now, once I have my stars fully applied here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of epoxy over top of this so that way we can add whatever kind of finishing decal we want in the end. And once it's on my turner, I make sure to hit it up really good with my torch, just like we always do, and then it'll be ready to move on to that next step once it has cured. Now this design can obviously be used with any type of decals you would like. I chose something a little bit more family friendly, but I know that there are some out there that are extremely popular right now, you know, being a ringmaster and all, but I wanted to do it just a little bit more family friendly, so that's why I chose the decal that I did today. 
Now with my decal, I just did a basic offset to be able to achieve that gold behind my, my decal here. I just wanted to give it just a little bit more extra, so that's why I did the gold. And that's the same pale gold that we used on the pinstriping. And my paper or my decal here, I'm actually using clear sticker paper. So I was able to just simply print that out and cut it out with my machine. And then I'm just going to apply it to my white vinyl because it is clear and I didn't want to waste it. And that's all I had. <laughs> so we just got to use what we have sometimes on hand. But this is a simple way to make sure that it really shines through once it is applied to our tumbler. So I'm just going to simply place it right onto my white backing here. Then I'm going to apply it to my gold. Now, because the gold is a textured metallic vinyl, you really want to make sure that you apply your vinyls down really good on top of this, because if you don't, if you don't form it really well, I like to hold it with my hand on it to kind of warm it up and make sure it gets into all those little creases. If you don't do that, the epoxy will seep under your decal and it will come off once you go to apply your epoxy and we don't want that. So make sure that you warm it up really good or you could even apply your gold decal over top of the pinstriping if you knew you wanted to do that, put a thin coat of epoxy over it, then apply your little decal, your finishing decal over top. Now once my decal is applied to my tumbler, I'm gonna come back through with some more of those little stars and I'm going to really accentuate our decal just a little bit more. I seen that there was some stars right there in the corner, so I went ahead and added some little silver stars there too. And I added some more little stars right up around the top of my decal, kind of doing the same thing where I kind of kept them grouped together just to really add to it. Then I came back through and I just added a couple more stars here and there just to give it some final touches. And after I'm done doing all this, I'm going to give it two last finishing coats of epoxy and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.